Hi, welcome to Plum Bush Farm. I'm Gabriel Berkey. Today we're going to talk about this guy right here. This is our vacuum pump for our new milking machine. So four years ago, my wife and I started by buying a little Nigerian dwarf goat named Annabelle. And she was a nice little goat, and she was registered. And that was how we started this whole adventure of milking. Fast forward a few years, and we've now all learned how to hand milk. And that's kind of like learning to ride a bicycle. Once you do it, you just know how to do it. Last summer, we milked seven does by hand every day, two times a day, and we got quite our fill of milking by hand. Now this spring, we are going to have about 15 does in milk, all at the same time. And for my wife and I to milk all that by hand, it's getting to be a little bit much. So we decided we're going to start checking into getting a milk machine. One of the things that I've learned through experience is that you get what you pay for. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of times when I've gone to the hardware store and the good tool, the right tool was right there. All I needed to do is buy it, but it was pretty expensive. And so I would buy a cheaper one to see if maybe this will be good enough. Try to save a little bit of money. And I can't tell you how many times it's happened to me that that cheap tool didn't work or it broke. And for whatever reason, I end up having to go back and buy the tool that I should have bought in the first place, buy the good one. Then I not only had to pay for the good one, but I also paid for that cheap one I had to throw away. So we didn't want to do that when it came to getting a milk machine. So sometimes when you put in a little bit of effort, you can have nice things and still not have to break the checkbook. That's what we tried to do with our milk machine. So I'm going to show you today how we put together a milk machine. And, you know, we couldn't have done this if it wasn't for the resources that we found on YouTube and reading online, all the things people have shared. So that's why we're sharing this video today. If it helps somebody, I'm glad. And one word of caution I would give you if you are going to be buying a milk machine. I would avoid the cheaper ones off of Amazon and those low-end ones usually don't have what you need for pulsation and you know it's just kind of like that cheap tool that I bought you're going to regret it. I would advise you to wait until you have the money to spend more and hopefully get a good machine. Now we haven't used this machine yet. We think we've got what we need. We think it's going to work well. We're going to give it a try tonight. And we're going to take you guys along. So all the things that I'm telling you of how we put it together, maybe that'll change over time. If it does, I'll try to update you. But I think that we've taken some good advice from other people online and we've done our research and we're hoping that we have a good setup here. So the basic components of a good milking machine are going to be your vacuum pump. That's what I've got right here. And after that, you're going to have a regulator. You're going to have a pulsator. You're going to need a gauge to show how much vacuum pressure you've got so that you can regulate it. And you're going to have a collection point of some kind, whether that's a stainless steel bucket or we're using uh, glass jars. And you're going to have the inflation. So I'm going to take you on a little tour here and show you exactly how we set this all up. So this is a Voigt pump. It's 5.5 cubic feet per minute, which is enough to easily milk one goat. We might be able to set up a dual system on it to be able to milk two goats at a time. So this runs off 110 volts. It's just like a little air compressor. It sucks in air from this side and exhausts it over here. The next thing in the line is a vacuum chamber, and this is just here for safety. Our vacuum pump is over there. Where we're going to be milking is this way. So we've got this in between, and the reason it's here is so that if we ever overrun our collection point, if we ever have too much milk get into our uh, container and it starts getting sucked up toward the vacuum pump, we do not want that making it to the vacuum pump because it's going to ruin our pump. That pump is the most expensive part of this whole setup, and so we don't want to ruin that thing. Originally, I thought about putting just a T across the top of this, and then I got to looking at it, and I said, I don't want this 
liquid, if there's liquid coming across here, I don't want it to be able to jump the top of this thing through a T and head on over to my pump. So instead I changed out and put this Y on it. That way if any liquid comes here, it's got to come in here, it's going to fall down in here, and then it would have to be sucked out the top to actually keep going. So this is probably close to a half a gallon of safety that if we would get any water or milk uh, sucked into this thing, we've got a safety to keep us from ruining our pump. If we ever get anything in here, we got a ball valve on the bottom. All we got to do is turn that, let it drain out. This is our manifold. This is where all the magic happens. So we have vacuum coming in from our vacuum pump, from our safety vacuum chamber. And the first thing that we run into here is a little regulator. And what this does is you loosen this nut here and you turn the top to regulate the pressure of the system. The next thing on this manifold is our pulsator. Now, for goats, we need a pulsator that pulsates at a rate of 90 times per minute. And this is a cheaper Amazon pulsator that we're hoping is going to work out well for us. I timed it and got it set up so that it's running at 90 beats per minute like it's supposed to. It has two outputs. We'll put a cap on the one and the other one is going to go to one of the lines on the inflation. The very last thing on our manifold here is our pressure gauge. Now on goats we don't want to go over 12 psi and so we're going to use the regulator to set it to 12 psi or less. If we go more than that we might bruise the goats teats. We don't want to have that happen. After that we're going to be hooking on from here to our collection point. So this is the last of the equipment that is permanent in the barn. Everything else gets taken into the house, washed up and all that. None of this should ever have liquid or milk or anything running through it. This is only vacuum. Okay, this is our milk tote. I have brought everything out to get ready to set up and start milking. I'm just going to show you what all we have in here. So we have our jar. We chose for our collection point to order lids from Simple Pulse. We like their setup with the press fit lid that will go on any wide mouth jar. So we're going to use half gallon jars, we could use a quart jar, or we can get one gallon jars. And so we have some options and the same lid fits everything. We like that. So that's the way we decided to go on this. These are the Top Flow Z inflations. And again, they come highly recommended. We did spend a little bit more for more expensive ones because when we don't have experience with something, I've learned that it's probably better to spend more money because in general you get what you pay for. Again, we're going to be learning how they work and giving them a try, but um, that's the kind we have. We do have Nigerian dwarf goats and they're fairly short goats. And these are fairly short inflations, so that was also a factor that we took into account. We got this hose from Hamby Dairy Supply, and this is milk line hose. I tried getting some hose from the local hardware store. We've got a great hardware store where I got all my PVC and everything. But this hose is nice and flexible. It's very rubbery. It's got a little bit of stretch, so we're going on to a little bit bigger size here than what we're going on to with the other end going in to the jar. This hose has enough stretch to make that work. This is also, it, this hose doesn't have memory, like it doesn't try to coil up on you while you're using it. So it's just really nice hose and we're really, really pleased with that. All right, I'm ready to start getting this set up to be able to do our first milking. These goats are going to be a little bit surprised. They've never been milked with a milker. And so we're going to just see how it goes, and you guys get to see right along with us. Excuse me, kitty, that's my spot. I'm going to take our wash water, and I'm going to just drop it in one of these uh, slots that I made here. And this is our collection point. So this is where we're going to catch the milk. That's going to go right in here. This is my inflation. So I'm going to hang it up over here, keep everything nice and clean. And this line right here goes to the pulsator. Right, 
and this hose goes to our jar. And this short length of hose goes from just off the regulator here down to our jar. Everything starts with the vacuum pump. Our vacuum line runs over here to this safety vacuum chamber. From there, the line runs over to our manifold. On our manifold, we have our regulator, our pulsator, and our gauge. The pulsator is hooked up to the small hose on the inflations. The big hose coming off the end of the of the manifold goes down to our jar. It goes to the one side of that lid. The other hose comes off of that lid, and it's the big hose that comes to the inflations. So we might want to adjust that up just a little bit. Butterscotch is our best dough. And according to milk test, she might be on track to make a over a 1200 pound lactation and um, the thing about her is she is hard to milk her orifices are kind of small so it's pretty fun to just sit here and watch the milk come out we're running right up to 12 and that's as high as we want to go for right now at least till we see how these goats are going to handle that Okay, final thoughts. We enjoyed that. It went really well. Honestly, it went a little bit better and easier than we would have expected. The two of the goats were real easy. The last one, Mocha, she's always kind of a stinker and she was uh, not too easy to milk, but uh, we'll just keep working at it going forward. Now we're not gonna use this to milk with just three goats on a regular basis, that doesn't make sense. But the reason we got it, the reason we got this set up is because we're gonna have another, you know, we'll be milking a dozen goats maybe in as soon as two to three weeks. And at that point, it's gonna be worth it to have this machine. And it went well. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, feel free to like, to comment, to share, to subscribe, all that stuff, you know what to do. And um, we'll see you again next time. Thank you.